What's going on chess lover? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. So y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. If y'all looking at my content for the first time and you're the one that want to get better in chess, whether it's opening, middle game, or end game, or maybe you're on my channel because you want to be entertained with the live bullet and blitz games that I play online, or maybe you want to find out not only how to be successful on the chessboard, but also successful in life. If this is you, make sure you hit that notification bell on, and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and guys if you have any questions and any content that you want me to share make sure you drop that comment below and i will give you the content that you requested without further ado let's actually get right to this video all right guys peace Chess lover, this is Maurice Bishop Chess. Y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Uh, I want to share with y'all uh, this very interesting game that I played against my opponent. I discovered some new things with the Black Lion, guys. The Black Lion. And I know I've been showing y'all a lot of uh, videos with the Black Lion, and y'all can see it all on my playlist. But guys, this one, I have to show you this. It's crazy. So without further ado, we're just going to get started right now, all right? So uh, my opponent played uh, E4. Uh, he played, or uh, I played D6, Knight F3, E5, um, D3, Knight B to D7, right? And um, Bishop E2, uh, Pawn C6. Obviously, guys, y'all already know, if y'all looked at all my other videos, y'all know that C6 is for, um, to put the queen on C7, but also it gives... Um, the queen some breathing room because maybe sometimes he could go queen b6 a5 but c7 is what we really want so uh, my opponent goes bishop b3 queen c7 uh, white castles and then h6 um, the reason for a6 as y'all know we want to prevent the knight from coming to g5 or maybe the bishop from getting to g5 but the whole point of a6 is not just to prevent them from coming to uh, the g5 square but we want to do a pawn storm with g7 to g5 all right so a3 is on play usually a3 is played because uh, in the future maybe the bishop wants to get to the g4 square to do some pinning so white is just uh doing a um a pre not a i guess you call it like a pre-move like just anticipating the bishop g4 move so he just go h3 to, uh, to put a stop to it so i continue with my development with knight g to f6 d4 is played um bishop b7 like i said all this just seems like you know logical moves um for black black is just developing um notice um with white white is not moving a pawn to a4 or maybe b4 um he's not getting the uh the knight out or you know really nothing like he's not getting nothing out right now all right so he takes i take bishop d3 g5 is played um and obviously guys the whole point of bishop d3 because he had to defend this um e4 pawn because that was weak so it's kind of like white is not attacking he's more of like defending and I'm more of just developing to an attack. So queen e2 is played. I go uh, knight d to f8 because obviously I either get this e6 square or this knight g6 square where I could potentially go knight f4, which is a very great uh, outpost for the knight. Uh, knight c3 is finally uh, is played and then I go knight g6. Knight e6 is not a bad move either. Because they'll give me the option of either going f4 or knight d4. But I always recommend knight g6. If y'all have an engine, the engine may even tell y'all uh, knight e6 or whatever. So, but I, I chose uh, knight g6. All right, knight d1, and I play g4, which is the uh, what I played. Uh, h catches g4, bishop catches g4. And I noticed that. This bishop is pinning this knight, and if this queen move out the way, then I can actually take um, this knight off. And then not only will he have double pawns, but his king will be exposed. So knight c3 is played, and I go rook g8, but honestly, I'm going to tell y'all something else, though. Anytime y'all get this move, the bishop on g4, 
you want to always go knight h4. Like, automatically go knight h4. Put more pressure on it. Go knight h4 automatically. You ain't got to wait to set up. Even though I saw this move, uh, I did see this move, but I realized that timing is everything. So, why wait? Um, I mean, I guess rook g8 is not a bad move either, but I always... I always recommend y'all to go knight h4 automatically. You know, I'll, I'll always go there. Because eventually we're going to get the rook g8 anyway. So you might as well put more pressure. Especially, like, if y'all playing, like, in tournament, this is stuff that you're going to want to do. Just go knight h4 automatically. Now, if you're playing bullet and everything, or, you know, any type of blitz chess online, I still recommend going knight h4 because uh, this can actually help you on your time because, you know, your opponent will probably think for a long time trying to think, like, what the heck he going to do. All right, so just just keep that in mind. But I play rook g8. He goes queen um, d1, and then I go knight h4. And, and you see what I say? Timing is, is everything. Now he gets to go bishop b2, which was way better of just going, like I said, guys, knight h4. This would have been way better because even if he does come here, then you still have knight catches f3 check, he takes, and then you have bishop h3 hitting the rook. But also you have this uh, deadly rook g8 uh, file as well. So th this actually looks a lot better, you know. But let's say, guys, let's say you didn't want to do that, like what pretty much what I just did. So queen d1, knight h4, he defends with bishop b2. Uh, I actually did... Um, a mistake, guys. Um, I did bishop captures f3. I want y'all to figure out what is actually the best move to do in this position. This is something that I discovered. So, like I said, uh, when I looked uh, looked over it, I found it. So, uh, I'm going to let y'all um, look at this. I'll give y'all three seconds to figure out what is black's best move. All right, guys. So Black's best move, guys. If y'all if y'all saw it, <laughs> Knight Capture G two is the best move. And guys, I probably had this position probably four or five times. And with this game, I just finally found out that you know I could have just sacrificed the knight. So you know what I mean. So this is something that I discovered and everything uh, from doing further analysis on it. Knight catches g2. So anytime y'all get a position like this, y'all got a, a bishop, a knight, and a rook on the g file, oh, you might as well automatically take that pawn on g2, which is fire, guys. Knight catches g2. So what happens if he takes the, the knight? Well, king catches g2. And there is another thing. How will y'all finish this, guys? What would y'all do? What would y'all do in this position? Three seconds to figure it out, guys. I'm going to get y'all to think this time. I ain't going to give y'all the answer. I'm going to let y'all think. All right, guys. Another move. Bishop H3 check. Man, that is fire. That is that is a fire move. I'm telling y'all, that's a fire move. Uh, why? If the king captures, we got queen C8 check. Obviously, guys, you don't want to go king h4 because obviously this leads to meat, right? All right, so what else can he do? Well, he got king h2. Okay, then we have knight g4. Notice, guys, this rook is still in this g file. This g file is so powerful. This rook is so powerful on this g file. So remind you, this king can't go to none of these squares on the g file. It can't go none of that. Because if it goes to any one or any three of these squares, knight captures uh, e3 with a check. And then also we're um, hitting the queen. And then, you know, uh, the king is also about to get mated too uh, as well, which is like very nasty. Very, very, very nasty. And the crazy part is, guys, even if he goes king h2, I wouldn't even have to take this um, queen at all because I could just come here. And uh, threat the mate, and it's nothing he could really do. Um, if he goes rook g1 to try to stop it, I have um, queen h5 check, 
Obviously, he can't go to none of this G file because of the rook. So the only way he could block it is with this, and then we get him in me. Um, even if uh, I don't know, guys. Like, if he tries to block it with the knight and everything, then we just get him a mate right here. <laughs> Which is, like, freaking crazy, guys. You know? So, it's like, it's nothing he can really do um, with that. So, after that knight g4, man, that is pretty much a rat. So, even if he goes king h1, what else do we have, guys, after uh, king h1? Well... Knight catches e3. That's what we got. Knight catches e3. So, so what will happen with this move? Well, if he decides to take this knight, then we have this check right here. Obviously, uh, we're about to meet him on g2. Uh, but he's in check, so he has to block it with something. So he'll have to block with the knight and then queen g2 check me, which is nasty, nasty, nasty. <laughs> Oh guys, man, I'm telling you, man, this is just this is just something. So let's look at this. Let's look at the position again. So let's say that White doesn't want to take the light square bishop. Let's say he um I don't know, guys. Um uh, let's say we just go knight g4. You know, we go knight g4. Um again, he don't he doesn't want to come here because the knight catches e3 and everything. But, of course, either way, uh, it will be a done deal after that. So, obviously, if he decides not to take, then I believe we still have knight catches e3 hitting this, um, you know, hitting this um, queen right here. Uh, if he does take, uh, we can get him in check. And then, um, obviously, he doesn't really want to come here because, obviously, we have this rook g file. Uh, I kind of think the best move... We'll probably have to be here just to prevent him from getting this um square. Um, if he tried to escape, uh, we do have bishop catches at three. We just pretty much winning material, um, pretty much. And then um after king f one, I mean we do have rook d eight. Uh, this is just <laughs> God. This is just not. This is just nasty. All all because of this knight catcher g two move, man. I'm telling you. You will have a lot of fun um, if you can get this position and then sack the knight on G2. That knight on G2 is just bananas, man. Even if he doesn't take the knight, it just it, it makes his position look so bad. It's just crazy. All right, guys. So I actually didn't get a chance to do the knight catch with G2, but I was showing you a lot of the variations of what happens uh, if he does take and when he doesn't take. So let's move right along. Um, Bishop catches at three. Uh, my opponent, or what I did is I go on uh, rook a to d8. I try to capture the um, d file. Also, uh, it does, you know, obviously he got to stay on his light square because obviously if he goes queen e1, then I got knight catches f3, and then I'm hitting his queen. The pawn can't take because this rook is pinning that pawn. So that's the reason why I did rook d8, just to see where the queen goes. So either way, I'm still dominating, which is still crazy. Like, I missed tactical move, but it's like the position is so strong, you know, on my end. It's just it's just crazy, guys. Um, so Rook D8. Um, this is another, and this is another thing, guys. Um, instead of Rook D8, uh, there was a better move. And I I wanna I got I definitely gotta show you this move. The move that um and, and like now this one I actually um uh, I was trying to analyze it myself and I thought Rook D8 was like the number one move but when I did a further analysis and I did it with the engine this time I did Knight H5 so the thing is with Knight H5 uh, I'm threatening Knight F4 so the thing is if Bishop captures H5 then I have Rook captures G2 and then if King H1 then I have Queen C8. So I'm threatening mate right here. And it's really nothing that he can actually do on uh, this square because of it. So I have, so the only way he can stop it is bishop g4. And then I have uh, rook catcher g4. But then after that, it's just pretty much over. Because um, after rook g5, uh, what else is he going to do? Because obviously he can't take that because the queen h3 um, would be checking me. All right. So, no one cares. so look at that, guys. So 
my opponent goes queen e2 like he should, right? And then uh, queen c8 is actually what I played. Uh, after queen c8, come on. <laughs> after queen c8, uh, there is g3. Uh, he played g3, and then I played queen h3. Come on. <laughs> You're on the video, man. <laughs> Let's, let's do a different kind of video. No, we can't Ooh. do this. this is the first. Man, look, guys. So, come on, man. I haven't seen you all day. I know. Hold on, let me finish. I'm almost done. All right, guys. That was my wife. I dropped the see. But um, Queen H3 is what I played. And then uh, notice, guys, it just it's just looking um, very crazy right now, you know? So, my opponent goes Bishop H1. And then, which I felt like he should have uh, kept his um, bishop there, so I go knight g4. And then, obviously, there's really nothing he could really do um, to stop this h2 move. Well, obviously there was, but he didn't do it. Um, but it still would have. Uh, he still would have lost anyway. My opponent did queen capture g4. So you're probably wondering why he didn't go f3. Well, this loses too. After queen captures g3, what is he going to do after that? If you block it with bishop g2, this is checkmate. Uh, obviously, you know, you're going to lose a queen or whatever, but knight captures g2. And again, it, it's still bad. It's still a bad situation because even if he does come here, uh, I still have knight captures e3 with a check. And then again, the only thing you can block it with is with um, bishop. And then queen captures g2 is checkmate again, guys. So this is just crazy. So uh, after after he uh, sacrifices uh, his queen, it's not really a sacrifice. Well, yeah, I guess it's a sacrifice, but it doesn't work. So he's just trying to stop me from me, you know. But I did rook catch a d4, rook a d1, and then I go rook catch a g3, and my opponent resigned. Why did my opponent resign? Because after, it doesn't matter what he do. Don't wake a block is with bishop g2. I made him. And then if he goes F capture G3, I still do the same thing. Queen capture G3 check. And then if he comes here, this is check me. So I hope y'all enjoyed the, this video. Um, please like, please share, please comment. Uh, let me know what you think of this video. Also, guys, make sure you turn on your notification bell on so you can get more amazing and great content. And also, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the bottom. All right, guys. Peace.